we saw what the tiger was doing in his cage and how he should have been if he were to be free in the wild in stanza 4 the tiger is again shown in captivity the poet tries to juxtapose the previous condition with the present one using the word but but is used to introduce a phrase or clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned in stanza 4 he captures the tiger's image walking up and down the cage silently without noticing the people gathered around its cage in stanza 5 he paints a verbal picture of the tiger looking longingly at the bright glittering stars from his confinement with his equally sparkling eyes this is time to introduce poetic devices in the stanzas 4 and 5 we have dealt with in this module as i told you already this poem appears simple though it has a complex pattern of idea the poet has made it interesting with a number of devices that strengthen and beautify the core let us discuss them one by one in stanza 4 he introduces pun pun is exploiting multiple meanings of the same word in a given situation here the concrete cell can be decoded in two ways one as a defined built structure and another something clear real and perceivable it becomes a pun as it is the present perceivable reality for the tiger as opposed to where he belongs the jungle the next device we would discuss is metonymy the phrase strength behind bars refers to the mighty tiger itself as you all already know metonymy is the use of quality that is associated with one thing to represent the thing itself so in that sense strength is a quality associated with the tiger so strength behind bars refers to the mighty tiger itself once again both the paragraphs are single thought strings punctuated only at the end of them thereby both stanzas are enjambments the poet has also used the figure of speech juxtaposition quite often tiger's present condition is contrasted with that of where he is supposed to be in this case concrete cell a man made enclosure is a juxtaposition against the wild environment described previously also the poet has juxtaposed the brilliant eyes of the tiger with the brilliant stars in order to demarcate the condition of the tiger with stars confinement and freedom next is imagery as everywhere else we can perceive tiger visually as an image in both the stanzas of tiger striding unmindful of the spectators and tiger looking glaringly at the shining stars in stanza 5 the image of patrolling cars appeal to sound and sight the glistening stars at night is also visually appealing the poet introduces a new poetic device irony a brilliant animal like tiger whose unmatched skills and brilliant capabilities remain pointless and the tiger would remain a mere showpiece all his life here is the vocabulary list of stanzas 4 and 5 in separate slides Let's analyze the rhyme scheme of the poem. You're expected to notice the ending words of each of the lines. Look at stanza 1. Let's name stripes as A, cage as B, quiet as C, and rage as it rhymes with cage B again. So the rhyming scheme of stanza 1 is A B C B. In the same way, let's analyze stanza 2. Let's name shadow A grass as b hole as c pass as it rhymes with grass as b again so the rhyming scheme of stanza would be a b c b again similarly in stanza 3 houses would be a edge would be b class would be c village as it rhymes with edge would be b again so the rhyming scheme would be a b c b in stanza 4 when you see closely you could see bars and visitors don't rhyme exactly the way the other words rhymed but they end with the same combination of letters rs so they can be said to be i rhymes i rhyme 
is a similarity between words in spelling but not in pronunciation cell can be considered a in stanza 5 bars b considered b cage as c visitors i rhymes with bars so it is b again so the rhyme scheme of the poem is a b c b If you remember rightly I told you in module 1 that I would be discussing sight words and sound words later they are nothing but words that appeal to vision and words that appeal to hearing here is the list please go through them carefully there are three identifiable value points we can derive from this poem number 1 freedom is one's fundamental right number 2 no one is powerful enough to have a say over others life or freedom number 3 animals are happier in natural environment than the restricted ones let's sum up the poem is a vivid description of a tiger in a zoo and how it would have felt if it had been wild He tries to give us a comprehensive view into the world of the tiger by juxtaposing two of its conditions in captivity and in wild. Stanzas 1, 4 and 5 deal with the tiger's condition and behavior in captivity. Stanzas 2 and 3 are the descriptions of tiger's supposed behavior in wild. In stanza 1 the tiger could be seen walking across the barred cage softly with an obvious but a hidden rage In stanzas 2 and 3 the poet presumes what the tiger would have been doing by then if he was free he would be waiting near a water hole to ambush a healthy deer who would also come there to drink water and he would be terrorizing the villagers at the brink of its jungle with its growl claws and fangs Stanza 4 describes an unfortunate condition of the tiger inside the cage he walks quietly up and down inside his confined space not taking note of the crowd who have gathered to see him when all have gone the tiger would be looking at the bright stars of the sky longingly is what has been described in stanza 5 i hope you enjoyed reading this poem happy learning